2020 YS4 making its closest approach today. 0. 0.0006. That's four decimal points. Uh, very close to Earth. You're talking. You're literally, literally talking that uh, this is coming one third the distance between the Earth and the Moon. And the the scale when you when you look at the orbital diagram you'll see the scale jump it looked like a jump from 0 0.04 au earth distance to 7.8 it's like well how does that do happen in the course of one day and actually it's it's a to the minus four power and to the minus three power so uh basically what you're seeing is an exponential scale that's in the decimal points that is taking you to smaller and smaller numbers. The minus four, minus three means 10 to the minus three, 10 to the minus four. Uh, that gives you four decimal points, which on this diagram, they say is somewhere around 111, 118,000 miles, excuse me, kilometers from Earth. That's pretty darn close traveling in the same direction. I do not think we will capture it, but I do think that when we have nearby objects, like we have comets swinging by Earth now, we have asteroids swinging by Earth now, we have other things that we don't see penetrating the atmosphere, coming in. It's like being in a shooting gallery. And so it's the main object may not be of concern. It may concern some people, but, but it's the smaller objects too that we're calling your attention to. But this thing literally comes, and, and you'll see the exponential scale at the bottom, Earth distance. You'll see e to the minus 4, e to the minus 3. Those are decimal points, people. So, so when, you get, when you get 8 to the minus 4, you, you're talking about 0 .0008. And then, of course, here's the proof. On the 22nd, you know, we were talking about close approaches, and between the 21st and 22nd, we had nine objects break the sound barrier. Now, our daily average is less, less than 1.5 meteors breaking the sound barrier every day. So, when we have seven, eight, nine in a single day, that is three to four times larger than our daily average and so that's a swarm and we told you these swarms were coming we said it was a great time to go out and observe for fireballs and just on the 25th great britain and norway caught a massive fireball that spanned all the way over the english channel into norway uh, witnessed by hundreds of people and and happening when there was sunlight out it was uh, either twilight or dawn i think it was dawn but um it was not a nighttime fireball so you can't say well the reason so many people saw it is not because of its size it's because of the time of day it showed up well i mean that plays a role but i told you i've seen a daytime fireball so it doesn't have to be night to see a fireball this fireball is just proves what I'm saying. Hundreds of people on the 25th witnessed this fireball. And um, incredible, incredible, um, massive fireball. So, you know, anytime I see something going east to west, I think asteroid. And when I see things uh, traversing north and south, I have a tendency to think cometary. Um, because the comets come in at inclined angles, then it seems like their debris should be coming in at inclined angles as well. Asteroids are more flat, excuse me, less elliptical, uh, more flat. So then when we see things traversing east-west, west-east, well, I think of those as more asteroid origin. But nonetheless, uh, we're getting... Uh, Fireballs coming north, south, and east, west. So we're getting bombarded probably both by cometary and asteroid material. 
Um, and again, this is not fear mongering because actually, I'm actually hoping we take an impact and walk out some of this radiation that is killing the planet. We, something extreme has to happen. Um, so until next time, be prepared, not scared.